So guys, welcome to another tutorial about um, the destructibles. So I have updated for the version of 4.20, but um, the static mesh still freezes the editor, and I think it's because uh, it's because of this one. Uh, there's a specific mesh because I have tried to do this with a cube, and it worked. So if I go into our cube, I can put whatever pieces I want. And if I click on fracture mesh, it will do it, and now I can see it fracturing and everything. So I think the problem was with the destructible mesh. So I'm going to um, open up that. Let me see. Just gonna find that, and I'm going to basically just copy the settings that I have on this one into the cube, and then I'll get back to you so we can continue the tutorial. Okay. Yeah, so another thing that I noticed is because now I have fractured the mesh, now I have two more settings. Um, or two more practical systems and sounds that I can use because now I have two, um, two arrays of these frac fracture effects so what I'm going to do is, I am think I'm going to use uh, the same one, so I'm, I'm just going to put stimulet and uh, I don't know, an explosion, that's fine and now you're going to see that we have two materials that was uh, what I wanted to explain in the first video uh, but because I didn't have the ability to explode the mesh, I couldn't really um, see this material because it only comes out as you fracture the mesh so you can see here you can see that this material is the wall grid and the other one is the cube material so now if you go into this one over here on the skeletal mesh materials and you sit switch this up to uh, whatever let's see uh, cobblestone rough okay then really update what I think it's because it's low res there's a problem but I guess we can see that um, on the over into when we actually play the game and I, th I don't think we did that anything else so I just copy the settings and I just when I clicked on fracture mesh I actually exposed another material slot and another particle effect slots because that's the fracture settings to the insides of the mesh that break apart so the sides so now I'm gonna go ahead and play and see if the code that I did in the second video actually works And there you go. So something happened. Uh, okay, it broke over to this side. Um, so obviously, because I didn't have the ability to test out what is dead, um, now we're gonna have problems with the settings because I probably did some of them wrong. So, first of all, I think I'm going to try and reduce the damage spread to 1. And I'm going to go... I'm going to disable asset to find support. And I'm going to disable uh, crumble smallest chunks. And I would guess... I'm going to disable the debris. And let's see what this does. Let's try again. Let's play. Okay, so it's doing the exactly the same thing. Uh, I don't know why is that, but it broke over to this side. I think that's because of the support depth. Let's pl play, place this at zero and try again. There you go. So if you disable the um, the depth, I think I might have missed on that value. So if you actually disable that, you can see that your destructible will get destroyed, and you're gonna have your particle effects. No, I don't really know why, but I can't really see the insides of the pieces with the material that I gave it. But that might be just because of the mesh UVs. So if the mesh UVs are bad or they don't have any you're not going to be able to do that so make sure that your mesh actually have good UVs and I think I'm probably going to uh, place this damage threshold to I guess 10 and I'm going to say I'm going to set the damage cap to 10 as well 
over here. So I'm just playing around the settings. You can do this on your own. And I'm going to be doing um, what this video is supposed to be about, but I need to fix some of these values. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to talk about, uh, there you go. I'm going to be talking about replication with destructibles. So let's go ahead and place two players over here in the scene. And let's see what happens when we destroy. So obviously if I shoot and destroy this, nothing's going to happen on the other client because we didn't replicate the destruction over in the code. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. Let's create a new custom event. Let's call this client underscore fire trace. Let's make this all on the owning client because we know that uh, firing, li li firing line traces can only be done on the clients. Let's plug this in over here. And when we press the button, we're going to call that client fire trace. Let's just switch the places over here. There you go. And now, once you fire the trace, we're going to need to make basically this apply damage on the server. So let's create a new custom event. Let's call it apply damage and better server underscore apply damage. Let's make that replicate on the server, make it reliable. Now we basically just uh, connect uh, this stuff into our event so we can create new input nodes. Oh, sorry about that. No, that's not what I want. And the impulse direction, there you go. And now we're going to be able to go over here and call server, apply damage, and the target is going to be the destructible component. And the it location is going to be our impact point, our location, and the impulse direction is going to be the impact normal. And now if we go ahead and compile and save, we can go and play. And now if we go over here with the server, uh, let's just divide the windows. Let me just go over here, and I'm going to use this. That's interesting. So as you can see, nothing happened again. Um, let me just try and change this. Instead of doing it on the server, doing a multicast. Let's play it again. There you go. Now you can see. Uh, so first thing that I get out of this is that the destructible uh, damage only works if you do a multicast. Uh, the server cannot handle this because this is basically, well, physics-wise. So you can really do it on the, the server. You need to make it happen on all the clients because the physics of the destruction is going to be calculated uh, by the clients. So that's the problem that I'm going to show you right now. If we go ahead over here, uh, we're probably going to see Actually, okay, that's actually pretty cool. If we go ahead and take a look, you can see that the pieces are going to be in different places. And you can notice small differences like over here. and uh, probably up here you can see like over here you can see that these pieces are like misplaced and they are not exactly in the same place so that piece over there isn't where it's supposed to be and you, if you take a look and see you can see a lot of different but now you're going to say well this is not really important is it uh, because it's just simple destruction of a basic cube but if you have for example uh, a large mesh and like you take a big chunk like of the size of this cube of it uh, on the game, this is going to, for example, act as cover. And if in one screen, this piece is going to fall on the front of the displayer, but on the screen of this one, it's like going to fall over here. Uh, that on your screen over here, you're going to be in cover, but on the screen of this person, you're not going to have any cover, and I'm just going to be able to shoot you through uh, what you think you have, but you actually don't. So because the damage normally done by line traces is calculated on the clients, um, 
you're basically going to be being hit through cover on your screen, which is not good. That's the problem with destructibles. But as you can see, if you just destruct something that is small with small pieces, uh, if this de is not going to block damage or bullets, this is perfectly fine. It's something visual that you can destroy and the little differences don't really matter because they don't affect gameplay and that's the point. You can only successfully replicate uh, damage on destructibles if uh, they are not going to uh, impact the gameplay. If they're going to impact the gameplay, uh, more specifically on the place of the chunks of the, the destructible mesh, uh, you, can, you cannot do it on multiplayer uh, for it to be accurate because pieces might fall and be calculated differently on each CPU and so pieces can end up on different places. You can see that it's very close and only a couple of pieces are not in the, where they're supposed to be but if you go into more advanced meshes and bigger meshes and when you have an entire game and the CPU is calculating a lot of stuff the CPU will handle different, uh, the same information the damage is being placed on the same place on every player but the CPU might calculate uh, the physics of the destruction differently and dependent in their capacity to handle stress of situations if like in the full game a lot of stuff is going to be being processed by the CPU so obviously all of that is going to make difference to where the pieces are going to and so just uh, a final note if you're going to have destructibles as a visual effect it's completely fine to replicate replicate them but if it's going to have effect on gameplay it's not a good idea to do it uh, on Unreal and to do it on a multiplayer game because uh, in this instance it's not going to work and you can see in battlefield games for example they have destructible environments the like the small destructibles they are going to open up holes on the uh, like uh, holes on the walls you can see that for example if you fire an RPG at the wall the wall is not going to have like a, a hole in it the entire wall is going to be destroyed so like its entire static meshes like this cube are going to fall apart and the pieces are going to disappear after a while uh, because the, it's the way of the Frostbite engine to handle uh, destructible, so they, they are just uh, each wall is a separate piece that once it gets destroyed it's removed from the game and their collision it's removed so in all the clients it's accurate because it's not really a physics based thing it's an entire actor or, or piece of an actor that gets destroyed uh, in this case if you are just taking chunks out of a piece of a destructible uh, with physics applied obviously uh, things might not be accurate on a multiplayer game, so pick up that example of a battlefield game if you want to make a destructible environment in multiplayer and have different actors for each pieces of wall so each wall for example in the house is an actor and once uh, once that destructible is destroyed you just remove that actor and their collision so you can have an accurate uh, replication of a destructible environment and that's really the what I can say so it's it's a good way to make multiplayers with physical uh, destructibles because and I don't really know another way and I see Battlefield doing it I see Rainbow Six Siege um, they are Rainbow Six Siege is actually a lot better than Battlefield in that case because you, you can make walls and stuff I don't really know how they did it but the, you can see that the game is very expensive on the internet if you play it expensive on the CPU so I don't really know how they did it but in Unreal uh, what they did in Rainbow is actually impossible in this engine because it's, this, en this engine is very limited on multiplayer it's not made for multiplayer although it supports it um, so yeah that's everything that I wanted to talk about uh, I'm sorry that I've been away in like I just got to uni and there's a lot of stuff that I need to take care um, I know these videos aren't that good or interesting but uh, it's what I can do for the moment I'll try to get back to your requests and stuff like that once I have more free time. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.